this is kind of a department where I haven't copied anyone. I've just developed my own combination of sounds. I like, I, I love gadgets and just to experiment with different sounds. I've gotten through a lot of envelope filters. Let's go in a circle. Okay, we'll start on the floor and we'll end up back at the rig. These are the Taurus bass pedals. It's a reissue model, a um, little less messy than the original, still really powerful. That's the earth shaking sound that people, people seem to like. There's a couple pre presets I have set that I wrote, dark, I call that dark. I don't know why I called that uh, oom, oomph. This is a volume here. If I, I can start it for no volume, bring it up. And then if I want to add tone, I can add some resonance. I'm not very good on my feet. Horrible skater, horrible skier, but I have to balance and do that kind of thing. And I only fall over sometimes. If I turn on this button here, it'll have a little sustain, so when I let go, it'll, it'll trail off. Let go, it trails off. Okay, so I come around the corner here. By the way, the fans are on a foot switch, which is pretty cool on this side. That turns the fans on. And this other button is a help button for my bass tech, Mike Burns. It lights up a light. So this thing here is a bass synth. I use it for Harry Hood when we do the crazy middle section. <laughs> The cool thing about this one is if you hold it down while, while it's making it sound, then it'll sustain the tone. <laughs> Just goes and goes and goes and goes. This is for my even tied. A lot of my sounds are even tied harmonizer sounds. I think it's the 4500 model. And then I also have an older 4000 model because there's one sound I just can't program in the new one. An example of an even tied sound that I really like, it's called Echo Space of God. Now the great thing about this, this one is that it lasts forever and forever and ever and ever. So now the super ego thing, let me show you how this, this is really cool. Um, if I play another note, it's going to glissando that note into the first one. I think it's really cool how one note swoops up into the other. Okay, now over here, the one that, that I really have a hard time replacing is this down with disease one. When I hit this, uh, three things happen. The flanger comes on, which makes it swim a little bit. The meatball comes on, which is the, the, uh, the, quack, the duck quacking envelope sound. And then that LXP15 comes on, and it's also, you can't see it, but it's selecting a patch, um, which, which my friend Edwin Hurwitz programmed a couple decades ago. Though these both relate to that uh, lexicon unit, LXP15. This one just makes it a little more robust, so I leave that on. This turns on and off the swimming. So if I want to start out the beginning with just some tones like that, the, uh, ambi the ambience, it's still quacking duck quacking because of the meatball being on, but it's reverberating a lot. Actually, let's just do this. I haven't done this in 20 years. Let's just turn off the meatball on the flanger and listen to what Edwin programmed alone. That's what he programmed. I can hear some backwards stuff. It's probably a backwards reverb. So I turn back on the meatball on the flanger and that makes it linger a little. Then I back this up. Right then I have no reverb, but I still have the meatball and the flanger going. Then we get to the chorus of the song, and I, and I want it to be a little less quacky, so I turn off the meatball. And so... Whatever. <laughs> and, uh, and then I'll turn back on the meatball. Then I do one more trick, which I've decided is a good idea. When we get to the jam, um, I know that all I want is the flanger to make it a little bit bigger sounding and a little bit swimmier sounding than, than nothing. But I don't want the meatball and I don't want the lexicon, so what I decide is that I don't want to be in this loop anymore. And I give myself the flanger alone. Then I'm not going through all the extra stuff. I have a cleaner signal that way. That's the down with disease scheme currently. I like this um, Pulsar one, which is, of course, uh, a delay. Well, what it says it does is mod depth, whatever that is. Oh, well, the fight bell, I should mention. We were at an antique show. I was at an antique flea market across the street from the venue 20 years ago in Florida. And I got two of them. One of them, actually, you hang on the, the wall and pull a string. And it's really loud. Has a mic built into it. 
Uh, so moving back here, the lexicon is hidden under there. The Eclipse is the newest one, and the old one is the 4500 down here, the lexicon. So um, what that leaves is these two trays here. This is the deep impact. That's the sound I use for Boogie on Reggae Woman. This thing here, this, this, this company Source Audio makes some really cool stuff because the distortions, you're, you're not only distorting the main note, but harmonics of the main note. And when you use the, I've got their envelope filter too, which I sometimes use, same deal. You're enveloping the, the, the harmonic frequency is different than the fundamental. So it gives it a kind of richness. So this is like brand new, they're, they're popular now. Mark bass to synth. So that's pretty sexy um, synth sound. This is an octave divider, although the one built into the synth pedal might work even better. So what it's nice to do is to mix in your envelope filter with your octave divider. Another trick I learned from Edwin Hurwitz um, decades ago. So I turn on, I'll, first I'll turn on the, uh, the loop for the, my envelope filters. This is the one I've used for a long time, the meatball. Um, a lot of controls on it, but you have to learn how to dial it. Maybe too many controls because it's tricky to dial it in right. That EQ back there, though, takes away some of those honky frequencies that happens with the envelope. So if I turn this one off and the source audio one on, it's not as robust, but the kind of sound is more interesting because it's, as I said before, I'm using, only using one of its many patches. It'll do two envelopes at once, three at once, based on, I think, using the harmonics of the note. With that said, I think I've gone through just about everything. I don't know if you've noticed this pad in front of my microphone, it turns on and off the microphone. And the great thing about that is that you don't want all the frequencies coming into your vocal mic when you're not singing because that's just gonna muddy up the mix. Oh, I'll show you one more trick. This is just a microphone that allows me to talk to uh, the guy doing monitors, Mark. So when I turn this on, I can't remember, I think it's momentary. Hello, one, two, three. Can hear my voice from way over there. Hello, hello. If I need to say something that's hard to explain, like I want more kick drum, but only the inside mic or something like that. Because, uh, you know, we have all the hand signals. Um, this, these are my, my monitor signals for kick drum, hi-hat, uh, let's see, snare drum, bass, guitar. I use this for keyboards. Organ, because of the spinning Leslie speaker. This would be organ down, piano down. Uh, oh, these are funny. Tray for Trey's voice. Paging for Paige. Uh, fish. Me, <laughs> um, probably leaving something out. So he's really quick at picking up those signals. But if there's something hard to explain, I use the mic. I think that's pretty much it. It's fun to kind of show it off, so thanks for watching.